Hi, I'm Sue. So glad you joined me for today's Bible reading for March 7th. And I'm reading Deuteronomy 24 to 27 from the World English Bible. And I'm going to pray first. Father, I just thank you and give you praise for this matchless gift of your word. I pray, as it says in Psalm 119, that you open the eyes of our understanding. Um, open our eyes that we might behold wondrous things from it. That you open the eyes of our understanding and the knowledge of you. Um, Father, I pray that there is a resurgence in the reading and studying of your word throughout America and the world. In Jesus' name. Chapter 24, verse 1. When a man takes a wife and marries her, then it shall be, if she finds no favor in his eyes, because he has found some unseemly thing in her, that he shall write her a certificate of divorce, put it in her hand, and send her out of his house. When she has departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. If the latter husband hates her, and writes her a certificate of divorce, put it in her hand and sends her, excuse me, puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house. Or if the latter husband dies, who took her to be his wife, her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after she is defiled, for that would be an abomination to Yahweh. You shall not cause the land to sin, which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance. When a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out in the army, neither shall he be assigned any business. He shall be free at home for one year, and shall cheer his wife, whom he has taken. No man shall take the mill, <clears throat> excuse me, or the upper millstone as a pledge, for he takes a life in pledge. If a man is found stealing any of his brothers of the children of Israel, and he deals with him as a slave or sells him, then that thief shall die. So sh you shall remove the evil from among you. Be careful in the plague of leprosy that you observe diligently and do according to all that the Levitical priests teach you, as I commanded them. So you shall observe to do. Remember what Yahweh your God did to Miriam by the way as you came out of Egypt. When you lend your neighbor any kind of loan, you shall not go into his house to get his pledge. You shall stand outside, and the man to whom you lend shall bring the pledge outside to you. If he is a poor man, you shall not sleep with his pledge. You shall surely restore to him the pledge when the sun goes down, that he may sleep in his garment and bless you. It shall be righteousness to you before Yahweh your God. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of the foreigners who are in your land within your gates. In his day you shall give him his wages, neither shall the sun go down on it, for he is poor and sets his heart on it, lest he cry against you to Yahweh, and it be sin to you. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You shall not deprive the foreigner or the fatherless of justice, nor take a widow's clothing in pledge, but you shall remember that you are a slave in Egypt, and Yahweh your God redeemed you there. Therefore I command you to do this thing. When you reap your harvest in your field and have forgotten a sheaf in the field, <laughs> excuse me, you shall not go again to get it. It shall be for the foreigner, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that Yahweh your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat your olive tree, you shall not go over the bows again. It shall be for the foreigner, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When you harvest your vineyard, you shall not glean it after yourselves. It shall be for the foreigner, for the fatherless, and for the widow. You shall remember that you are a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. If there is a controversy between men and they come to judgment and the judges judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. It shall be if the wicked man is worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to the wickedness by number. He may sentence him to no more than 40 stripes. He shall not give more, lest if he should give more and beat him more, then that many stripes, then your brother will be degraded in your sight. <laughs> Some of these are so strange. Verse 4, you shall not muzzle the ox when he treads out the grain. That one's quoted again in the New Testament, I believe. Verse 5, if brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the wife of the dead shall not be married outside to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go into her and take her as his wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. It shall be that the firstborn whom she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother who is dead, that his name not be blotted out of Israel. So that's to preserve the lineage and the inheritance. Verse 7. If the man doesn't want to take his brother's wife, then his brother's wife shall go up to the gate to the elders and say, My husband's brother refuses to raise up his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of a husband's brother to me. 
then the elders of the city shall call him and speak to him if he stands and says i don't want to take her then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders and loose a sandal from off his foot and spit in his face and she shall say so shall it be done to the man who does not build up his brother's house his name shall be called in israel the house of him who had his sandal removed when men strive against each other and the wife of one draws near to deliver her husband out of the hand of him who strikes him and puts out her hand and grabs him by his private parts then you shall cut off her hand your eye shall have no pity you shall not have in your bag diverse weights one heavy and one light you shall not have in your house diverse measures one large and one small you shall have perfect and just weight you shall have a perfect and just measure that your days may be long in the land which yahweh gives you for all you do for all who do such things all who do unrighteously are an abomination to Yahweh your God. Remember what Amalek did to you by the way as you came out of Egypt, how he met you by the way and struck the rearmost of you, all who were feeble behind you when you were faint and weary, and he didn't fear God. Therefore it shall be, when Yahweh your God has given you rest from all your enemies all around in the land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance, to possess it, that you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sky, you shall not forget. So basically, they made the Amalekites extinct from the land. From the way I understand it, they migrated away. So they weren't completely annihilated, but they were certainly removed from the land of Canaan. Um, and that's just my speculation. Uh, chapter 26, verse 1. It shall be when you have come into the land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance, <clears throat> excuse me, possess it and dwell in it, that you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you shall bring in from your land, that Yahweh your God gives you. You shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place which Yahweh your God shall choose, to cause his name to dwell there. You shall come to the priest who shall be in those days, and tell him, I profess today to Yahweh your God, that I have come to the land which Yahweh swore to our fathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket out of your hand, and set it down before Yahweh your God's altar. You shall answer, and say before Yahweh your God, My father was a Syrian, ready to perish. He went down to Egypt and lived there, a few in. There he became a great, mighty, and populous nation. The Egyptians mistreated us, afflicted us, and imposed hard labor on us. Then we cried to Yahweh, the God of our fathers. Yahweh heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. Yahweh brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with great terror, with signs and with wonders. And he has brought us into this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now behold, I have brought the first of the fruit of the ground which you, Yahweh, have given me. You shall set it down before Yahweh your God and worship before Yahweh your God. You shall rejoice in all the good which Yahweh your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the foreigner who is among you. When you have finished tithing, all the tithe of your increase in the third year, which is the year of tithing, then you shall give it to the Levite, to the foreigner, to the fatherless, and to the widow, that they may eat within your gates and be filled. You shall say before Yahweh your God, I have put away the holy things out of my house, and also have given them to the Levite, to the foreigner, and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all your commandment, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed any of your commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten of it in my morning, neither have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor given of it for the dead. I have listened to Yahweh my God's voice. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down from your holy habitation, from heaven, and bless your people Israel, and the ground which you have given us, as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. Today Yahweh your God commands you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore keep and do them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared today that Yahweh is your God and that you would walk in his ways keep his statutes his commandments his ordinances and listen to his voice now let me stop right there and just put a plug in for bible reading as it relates to this verse because it says you have declared today that yahweh your god and that or that yahweh is your god that you would walk in his ways keep his statutes his commandments his ordinances and listen to his voice so for those that claim that you know they've given their life over to jesus repented and received that gift of eternal life from him for you know remission of sin and that we can walk in fellowship with him and live with him forever and escape hell which we deserve um and this says that they said that they would walk in his ways and keep his statutes so for those of us who have said that 
you know, if we're going to follow him and be his Jesus disciple, then we are saying that what they're saying here, we're going to keep the statutes. We're going to keep the commandments. I mean, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, right? And follow him. How you can even know if, if God is directing you, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, if you don't have the word to compare it to. So my, my um, spiel for Bible reading, you know, to promote Bible reading and provoke Bible reading and study is, is to say, how are you going to know what God expects? How are you going to follow him and be his disciple if you don't know the word, if you don't read the word? I, I think it's a, an oxymoron to say that you're a Christian and not read the Bible and not learn it and find out what god is saying how are you going to know him if you don't listen to him you know part of listening to him is is listening to his words and like i always say you get to know someone by listening to them you're getting to know me by listening hearing my words hearing my voice if we just sit in each other's presence and don't talk we don't get to know each other so it's listening speaking and listening is what relationships are built on how much of relationships are built on that so i just love this this part of scripture, I'm going to read it again, but it, it's perfectly applicable to us today in our relationship with God, our personal relationship with God. It says, verse 17, you have declared today that Yahweh is your God and that you would walk in his ways, keep his statutes, his commandments and his ordinances and listen to his voice. I love that. Let me keep reading. Verse 18, Yahweh has declared today that you are a people for his own possession and he has promised you that you should keep all his commandments. He will make you high above all nations that he has made in praise in name, in honor, and that you may be a holy people to Yahweh your God as he has spoken. Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, keep all the commandment which I command you today. It shall be on the day when you pass over the Jordan to the land which Yahweh your God gives you, that you shall set yourself up great stones and coat them with plaster. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you have passed over that you may go in the land which Yahweh your God gives you, a land flowing with milk and honey as Yahweh the God of your fathers has promised you. It shall be when you have crossed over the Jordan that you shall set up these stones, which I command you today, on Mount Ebal, and you shall coat them with plaster. There you shall build an altar to Yahweh your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use any iron tool on them. You shall build Yahweh your God's altar of uncut stones. You shall offer burnt offerings on it to Yahweh your God. You shall sacrifice peace offerings and shall eat there. You shall rejoice between before Yahweh your God. You shall write on the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Moses and the Levitical priests spoke to all Israel, saying, Be silent and listen, Israel. Today you have become the people of Yahweh your God. You shall therefore obey Yahweh your God's voice and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. Moses commanded the people the same day, saying, These shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you have crossed over the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. These shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse. Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. With a loud voice, the Levites shall say to all the men of Israel, Cursed is the man who makes an engraved or molten image, an abomination to Yahweh, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret. All the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed is he who dishonors his father or mother. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who removes his neighbor's landmark. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who leads the blind astray on the road. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who withholds justice from the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his father's wife because he dishonors his father's bed. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with any kind of animal. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter. All the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his mother-in-law, all the people shall say amen. Cursed is he who secretly kills his neighbor, all the people shall say amen. Cursed is he who takes a bribe to kill an innocent person, all the people shall say amen. Cursed is he who doesn't uphold the words of this law by doing them, all the people shall say amen. That's it for today's reading. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Shalom, shalom.